The two best players of the Grand Cut Chess Classic are facing each other in the finals. It's Magnus Carlsen against uh, Richard Rapport and uh, both players ended on first and second place respectively in the group uh, stage. Both uh, games uh, they played against each other ended in a decisive uh, result. Fantastic uh, games are always played between these uh, two and this game is not going to be any uh, different. In the first game of the final, it's uh, Magnus who's playing with the white pieces. And in this video, I'm, I will show you what, uh, what's going to happen. First of all, I would like to thank you all for the overwhelming support uh, over the last week and way before, of course. But if you would like to help me to grow the channel, I would really appreciate all the support. So please hit the subscribe uh, button. Here we go. Magnus opens uh, the game with 1e4. And that's interesting as he deviates from uh, the game they uh, played earlier. I covered it also on the channel. Magnus in that game played 1d4. It was a very exciting Benoni. But for this particular occasion, he has something uh, very interestingly uh, prepared. So here we see what it is. e4, e6, the French defense. This doesn't come as a surprise at all. d4, d5, knight c3, bishop b4, e5, advancing the pawn, grabbing space in the center. c5 is played, a3, Bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and now knight e7. And Magnus goes for the sharpest move, queen g4, attacking the pawn on uh, g7. There are different ways to deal with it. Queen c7 is a very uh, sharp uh, move. So if you do take the pawn on g7, there are a lot of wild complications. The opening theory uh, goes up till move 40 and, uh, and beyond. So let's not get into that particular uh, theoretical line. But I know that bishop d3 is a very interesting uh, variation uh, as well. So um, here again, a lot of uh, theory. If you uh, take on uh, d4 with the, with the plan of taking on uh, c3, I think the idea is to, uh, to play knight e2 here. And uh, well, a lot of theory, but white seems to be somewhat better over there. So Rapport goes for the move queen a5. May look strange to provoke... The bishop coming to d3, while the, the queen could have uh, gone to a5 in, in one move. But the idea is that after bishop d2, as the pawn on c3 needs uh, protection, there is c4 hitting the bishop on d3 with tempo. Now the bishop goes back to e2. We have this kind of closed uh, structure in the French. And usually uh, the knights are uh, faring quite well in these uh, sort of closed positions. But black is also having uh, the bad bishop. Typical French bad bishop, the light squared bishop, it's restricted by all its uh, own pawns. And, uh, well, there are some other issues, but I will uh, talk about it uh, later. Here, most games, knight f5 was uh, played to uh, to protect the pawn on g7, but Rapport goes for the move rook g8. And here, a4. This is a very important move in a lot of uh, French uh, position. So the plan is that at the right moment you would like to bring your bishop to this uh, diagonal. As the dark squares they are vulnerable. They are chronically weakened. There is not much black can do about it. He's missing its own dark squared bishop. So the plan of bishop uh, c3 to a3 is a typical one. But here first you got to think about the pawn on uh, c3. Knight bc6 and interesting moment as up to this point MVL and Rapport played this earlier in the tournament. In that game, they followed knight to f3. But very often in these uh, Wienauer structures, the knight is not that well placed on this square. And Magnus has a different plan. Rather than developing the knight to f3, he played queen h3. I think it's a very interesting move to attack the pawn. And uh, black... He may have considered just to uh, sacrifice the pawn by playing bishop d7, castling queenside, and say that the pawn is not important at all. Could have been a very interesting uh, approach as well. But h6 is also perfectly uh, playable. But now, bishop h5. So the bishop is eyeing the pawn on f7. After bishop to d7, now also the knight has the e2 square available. So that is the main plan of... Um, of white to develop the knight in uh, in this way. Castling queenside is not a possibility as it hangs the pawn on uh, on f7. So therefore, instead of uh, castling queenside, black played here the move g6. Questioning the bishop, and you can think, well, the bishop got the move, it's losing a tempo, but it's a very conscious decision by world's number one. He goes back with the bishop to g4, 
now you see the pawn on h6 is attacked by both the uh, bishop and the queen h5 therefore played and now the bishop goes back to f3 so various possibilities castling uh, queenside is still one of them but first knight f5 is played and um, here magnus uh, continues playing in a very energetic uh, way by opening up the king side with the move g4 i really like this idea it's um, actually slightly weakening the pawn formation on the king side but it does activate the bishop which exerts pressure against the knight and after castling queenside magnus even decides to trade off the bishop for the knight immediately very interesting decision a very typical plan in uh, in this opening and well the the big question is how are you going to take back if you take back with the g pawn then you have doubled pawns on the f file and white is having a great time here because he has a having a very easy plan to uh, advance the uh, the h pawn so therefore black decided not to take back with the g pawn but instead recaptured away with its pawn from the center e takes f5 now of course the, the center is a bit more vulnerable but potentially the bishop can uh, start attacking the, the queen as well first bishop to g5 so the bishop is now finding a different route to uh, infiltrate on these uh, dark squares rook goes to uh, to e8 and here the king goes to d2 very typical plan the king is absolutely safe in the center because the center is closed there's no way for black to open it uh, the rooks are nicely connected and of course it should be clear that castling either side was not a very attractive uh, option so black played here the move rook to h8 to attack the queen queen goes to f3 putting a bit of pressure against the pawn on d5 okay pawn is still defended by the queen but here black improves its position by rerouting the knight via d8 to e6 but there's bishop to f6 attacking the rook on h8 the rook goes to h6 and here h4 is played knight comes to e6 so everything is going according to uh, to plan and i mean you can see the, the typical uh, features of uh, french uh, opening opposite colored bishops bishop on d7 is not uh, not looking great but how is white going to break through that's not an uh, not an easy question and i think the plan should be at some point to trade off this knight on e2 for the knight on e6 but if you play knight f4 here well you gotta reckon with knight takes d4 ideas so that is uh, that's not a good move but instead queen e3 first to attack this rook and then after rook goes away then play knight f4 it's uh, it's definitely better for white in uh, in this position you have a better bishop and i think also with the presence of not only the opposite colored bishops but also the major pieces on the board in the long run seems to me that um the black king is uh, somewhat more vulnerable and white always will have ideas either to uh, break through via the queen side or maybe uh, open up this uh, diagonal or if the rook goes away maybe h5 is a possibility i would not um, fancy playing uh, black here so let's go back magnus also understood that he needs to open the position at some point but he played here to move h5 and i think this is a really serious mistake as it does allow black to keep the position closed with the move g5 and this is a very nice pawn block and of course queen takes f5 taking the pawn will be met by knight takes d4 black is striking back in the center with a discovered attack on the queen so that would be a huge mistake now black is uh, is doing absolutely okay white goes for rook a2 e1 putting up uh, some control over the uh, the e file but the position is incredibly difficult incredibly complex for this uh, short uh, time control of 45 minutes plus 10 seconds increment and um the pawn on a4 can never really be taken it's something french players they they know all about it if you take on a4 with the queen it's rook going back to a1 and you take on a7 and soon the other rook will come over so that's not gonna work the alternative to take with the bishop will be met by queen takes f5 and then the white gets exactly what it uh, what it wants so what should black do instead well the, the move played in the game is is very understandable f4 to restrict the mobility of the knight however a waiting move like a6 apparently is the best move according to the to the machine and it's it's very difficult to understand why that is uh, is is the case actually but if you if you do attack this um this uh, pawn on uh, g5 
with uh, rook e g1, then g4 can be played, and it's it's not possible to uh, to take on uh, on f5 because of that discovered attack. One line I want to show you is the following one. It's very complicated line, but let me show you this. If you if you play something like f4 to to hit the queen, knight takes f4, rook takes f6. Insane tactical idea with the point that if you take it, there is now knight to g5, and suddenly white's queen is in trouble. If the queen goes away, it's knight e4. So this is the sort of counterplay black is uh, black is aiming for. So not easy for white to make progress after after a waiting move. But Rapport played instead the move f4. And now it's rook e to g1. This is uh, just a very, a very good move, threatening to take the pawn now. So black goes for rook to g8, but now the pawn on g5 is pinned as the rook on g8 is, uh, is unprotected. And knight takes f4 is uh, therefore the game's continuation. And if you take with the knight, the simplest move is to take with the bishop on g5 and you're winning material because black is having uh, too many unprotected pieces. So here, before taking on uh, f4, black says, okay, I need to elim eliminate that bishop first with a rook. So rook takes f6, pawn takes f6, knight takes f4. We have a position now with two minor pieces against the rook, but white is having a big asset, which is the pawn on uh, h6. And the pawn will come to h7. And if you can do that and the rook needs to go away, then you can take on g5 and white will do everything within its capacity to enable the pawn to uh, to promote. So that is the, the main plan. Therefore, the knight goes back to e6 so that after h7, rook h8, the um, knight is uh, protecting the pawn on g5. And so how is white going to infiltrate with its rooks? Well, Magnus has calculated this very well as he played here the move queen e3, which also, by the way, prevents knight takes uh, d4 ideas. And after queen d8, attacking the pawn on uh, f6, looks as if black is uh, in time to consolidate its position. But now the key move, uh, the big move, uh, part of uh, white's uh, play here is rook takes g5. And this is critical because the rook on g5 can be captured by the knight, which was played in the game. But let me first show you this. If you take with the queen on f6, there is rook to g8. And you don't want to take on g8 because the pawn will be promoted. And if you go away with the king, there is queen e5. You do force the exchange of queens because it comes with check. And after queen takes d takes, there's nothing you can do uh, against the control of the uh, promotion square. So white is breaking through here eventually. So... Instead, after rook takes g5, knight takes g5 was played, queen takes g5, and all of a sudden, black is just a full piece up. But it's not really a full piece, I, sh I should uh, say, because the pawn on h7 is a huge uh, pain in the ass for the, uh, for the black pieces. The rook on h8 is not able to move. After king c7, there is queen to, uh, to c7, uh, so that now the queen and the rook are tied down to the protection of the promotion square. Bishop protects the pawn on f7. And uh, here, interesting moment. I think white is, is pushing here. And with, with moves like rook h5, you will uh, forever uh, prevent the um, bishop from getting to, uh, to f5 at, uh, at the right moment. But Magnus played here rook e1, which is a mistake. As the bishop could have gone here to f5, which was not played, missed opportunity by black. But you should understand getting lower on time and you have just protected your pawn on f7 it feels kind of weird to allow white capturing on f7 but after king to c6 apparently there are no good checks and on the next move black is able to take the pawn on h7 even if you switch now uh, your um, your plan by going with the rook to h1 there is queen to d6 and all of a sudden there is counterplay with the queen and uh, and the bishop so bishop f5 would have enabled black to uh, to stay in the game. But instead, here, the move king b6 was played. So what black is trying to do is walk away with the king so that after the bishop moves away, there is not queen takes f7 with check. But moment is uh, gone now. Rook e5 really prevents black from ever getting that bishop to, uh, to f5. B queen to c8 played, f4 played by white. So white is looking for the possibility to break through. To open up the uh, e-file and find some ways for the rook to infiltrate. Black played a6. And this sets a little trap. Because I imagine a lot of us would just have played here to move f5. But after bishop takes f5, rook takes f5, queen takes f5, white can take on h8. 
but doesn't get a chance to promote a pawn because black will give a check on f4, preventing this king from escaping to the to the queen side. After king d1, queen f queen f1, king d2, simply repetition is uh, inevitable. So Magnus realizes that the situation is under control. Black cannot do anything before anything else. He just ensures that the king is safe. There will not be a perpetual king c1 double exclamation mark. Fantastic, nice prophylactical move. So that after king a7, there's not much black can do. You can play the move f5 and this time the bishop cannot take on f5 because of the same idea. And uh, after any sort of check, you hide with your king on the uh, queen side. There are no more checks. And on the next move, uh, you move the queen and promote your h-pawn. So black moved the bishop away to, uh, to d7. Now, I mean, uh, you can take the pawn on f7 or take on d5. Uh, both are good-looking uh, options, but no need to rush here. Once again, pawn on a5 is a, is a good move as well, uh, locking up the king on the queen side. Queen goes to f8, and here, once again, there are many interesting moves. You'd never want to allow something like queen a3 with hopes on, on counterplay. Not that it's going to be serious, but anyway, king b2 is just a very simple and good move, and obviously... Swapping queens on g7 is never going to work because these two pawns are too strong for the rook. So black went back with the queen to c8. Now it's rook takes d5, taking another pawn. Bishop goes to c6, rook goes back to e5. And black, black's pieces are totally paralyzed. They cannot leave the back rank. Bishop d7 played, queen takes pawn now. And after bishop takes f5, now black is actually threatening to, uh, to take on h7, but rook to c5 is the killer move. Very nice idea. Um, attacking the queen, and the queen also got to maintain control over the bishop on, um, on f5. And if you do take on uh, f7, with the idea that if you take there, there's rook takes f7, but the simplest move here is probably just to take with the queen on h7. It's a very nice deflection move. Uh, if you take on h7, it's uh, rook takes c8. And if you uh, instead first take on c5, then I'm going to take back. Bishop takes h7 and the pawn is unstoppable. So that is the main plan. Black therefore played queen e6. But now the queens are getting exchanged and the rook comes back to the 7th rank. So the pawn is supported. Bishop f5. And now, nice idea, rook to g7. And black once again cannot take with the rook on h7. It does allow rook takes, rook takes and the f-pawn is uh, unstoppable once again. And if you take with the bishop, which was played in the game, there is the move f7 threatening to simply take on h7 with the rook, deflecting the rook from guarding the promotion square, as the rook also got to defend the uh, bishop on uh, h7. And if you, if you move the bishop, let's say, to, uh, to e4, then uh, rook g8 is uh, coming, followed by the promotion of the f-pawn. So black... I don't know what happened. Uh, Rapport played the move bishop d3. Don't really see the point after c takes d3. He resigned. I mean, his position was lost anyway. Maybe he was hoping on some sort of counterplay with this d-pawn. But after rook g8 anyway, uh, white is just much faster promoting its own pawn. After rook h2 check, the king comes to c1. Everything is nicely protected. And uh, therefore, after capturing the bishop, Rapport resigned. I mean... A very complicated French game. I really enjoyed this one. Very instructive battle. I mean, Rapport is a true specialist on the black side of this uh, opening. But Magnus, well, he is the best player of all time. And he really understands these kind of positions uh, very well. Very nice planning. Very nice calculation uh, along the way by him as well. Even though he slipped at some point. Um, definitely a, a kind of a nice uh, model game despite the uh, hiccups in uh, in white's play but anyway it's uh, magnus who wins the first game of the final and let's see in the uh, next video what's happening in the second game and perhaps even uh, after that so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching bye bye